a shine. Right. Yeah. Hello, welcome back to Anderton's TV. Today we are attempting to become Rage Against the Machine. Ratum. Ratum. So I'm going to be obviously Mr. Tom Morello. I'm going to be Tim Comerford, or in today's case, Kim Tomerford. <laughs> You're impressed, <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> onwards. The most important thing I need is an effects loop. Uh, without an effects loop, forget it, because Tom runs all his effects into the, uh, into the effects loop and there's plugs into the front of his JSM 800. So there are two, there's a couple of options. There's the Orange 35RT, but I think that might be too dark. It, it, it's not really the Marshall-y thing. Um, there is a Marshall, but it doesn't have an effects loop, so I can't use that. But there's the Catalyst by Line 6, and that does have an effects loop. So, and I haven't played for a Catalyst yet, so I think I'm going to pick the Catalyst because it fills all the boxes. There is yep. the Viper as well. Does, does the Viper have an effects loop? No. So that's out. So yeah, it's the Catalyst. Uh, there's also the guitar as well, but I'm going to go with the Catalyst for this one. Job's a good one. Cool. So bass amp time? Yep. So Tim obviously uses three Ampeg amps, but he's recently switched one out for an orange. So I think I'm going to go with the Orange Crush because I know that they have a lot of power in them and Again, a lot of the sound is going to be coming from the pedals, so it's going to be a good kind of uh, platform for us to get that really growly Tim tone. Um, the Ampeg is, is another option, so I may end up taking both, but I think it's going to be the orange, so yeah. that should be it. That was easy enough. <laughs> uh, I know we've just had a Stingray come in and Ooh. also a Squire Affinity, so obviously Tim being a big user of both of them, We'll do another shootout, see which one works best. Uh, the Squire Affinity should be cheaper, but it might not necessarily have the right tone. Mm. But we shall find out in a video room. Tim's so. got quite a dark tone. He has, it? yeah. It's always distorted as well. It's never clean, yeah. is it? And it's quite often got an octave divider on it. So. Yeah, I thought it was off and on. Uh, it's way. on for most of their stuff, weirdly. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised, though, because Tom's tone isn't the hugest and he's yeah. a big neck pickup kind of guy but it's not the massive guitar it's, it, it's like what tom morales says though. it's like it's a very much like um the led zeppelin thing where there's like a big riffarama thing but the guitar kind of sits where it sits but yeah. the bass is kind of like the biggest part of the sound yeah as well as the drums so it makes sense really so yeah need you to be massive because i yeah. want to be skinny i mean he doesn't I also need use a strap it really high so of course yeah he doesn't use it constantly but it's on a hell of a lot of the time so it's quite an oh. important effect so the fattener <laughs> the fattener it's the mcdonald's paddle <laughs> just grease just shoveling <laughs> it into your face okay so that's that's thing so guitar i've done guitar amps what we need guitar, guitar pedals and bass pedals yeah so you've done, oh, you i'm gonna i'm gonna look for guitar so yeah. tom Rowe is a bit of a big word that i was nearly about to say um <laughs> Because obviously he's got the Armour Homeless guitar, which obviously has kill switching ability because he can turn more volume off. But the neck pickup on his guitar is a single coil and his bridge pickup is a humbucker. At the same time, and I, knew, I do need a kind of bridge humbucker there, I could go Telecaster or something like that, but I, I don't think I'm going to find a guitar with kill switch uh, in budget. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's cheap. 42 quid, it's just a stand, Dave. <laughs> I mean that's that's I mean that looks that's way over budget unfortunately it's seven something seven six nine but it does have a kill switch and it's very much arm homeless isn't it, it that is. one but do it, um, do it do it splash out splash out seven six nine oh yes. I mean that's a lot of budget yes. but it's the splash perfect out. guitar <laughs> it is the perfect guitar we just need some hippos on it <laughs> um, go on then we'll get this and we'll go for a cheaper option yeah. and yeah. we'll we'll just have a giggle at both so yeah. we'll do. Gruesome Greeny, which hopefully we can do some green screen stuff on. <laughs> we can like we can like import a picture of Tom Morello's face on it. Um, yes. And I'm going to go Telecaster as well, just because. I'm going to look at Squire Tellies. We do have the Telly uh, thingy, but it's a humbucker in the neck, and I need a single coil in the neck. We could use the Cyclone because it's got the ability to turn pickups off and on, and we have a single coil, but we don't have a humbucker there. But I kind of want to take it and see if it works. 
It's worth so, a try. What's the Squire Telly there? Ugh. I think I'm going to go with Cyclone, just because it's kind of got... It's weird. And we know Cyclone. Cyclone and... <laughs> the, <laughs> the EVH. Oh, there's also the uh, Pacifica. Yes. Oh, uh, extreme, you know, thing. Because we've got, we got Humbucker and Single Coil. Oh, now we're, now we're struggling. <laughs> so I've got a choice of three now. There's the EVH, Pacifica, or the Cyclone. I think I'm going to go Pacifica and the EVH. So I've got the cheap one. Just got to pick which one. I mean, look at that. Stunning. Which one? Wow. Which one? Let's go extremely expensive and extreme budget. So this is this is two five nine, and we've got the one one that's really expensive. And I'll play both, and we'll see which one works best. Because it could be surprised. I mean, this one might kick the one's face. It might. Off. But um, so that's guitar. So now the joy of pedals. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with overdrive because the overdrive is coming out. But I need a wah wah pedal. I need a cry baby. But I can't see any here. But I'm sure we can get a cry. Can we get a cry baby? We've got a Crybaby a mini one. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. So, yeah, so Crybaby mini, need a delay. Need like a, di a digital delay as well. Uh, just one will do. Tom has two, but I need a digital delay. There. Look the Fender ones. The, the Fender have got a... Uh... 75 bits. Yeah, for delay. I'm going to get that Fender delay. Is that, uh, is that kind of tape or is it uh, digital? Yeah, so I'm going to go for that Fender delay. Phaser. For like, no effect whatsoever. <laughs> the beginning of killing in the name of that I yeah, don't that. use. Um, there is a Phase 90. The Phase 90 is fairly cheap, and then there's a Phase 95, the mini one. I might get a Phase 90. This, I'm going mental on this one. So I'm going to get a Phase 95. Um, so that's another thing. I probably won't use it, but we'll try. So i got Wah, Phase, Delay, Whammy. Now, Whammy is a Enjoy. pig. Enjoy. Whammy is a pig. So there is the Behringer multi effects thing here. It does have a pitch shifter. Ooh. Uh, and there was a pedal I used for Muse. Pitchfork. The, pitchfork, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get this and the Pitchfork and try it. And uh, yeah, that's me. Cool. So bass pedals, uh, octave pedal, first and foremost. So what do we have? There is the Boss octave pedal back here. It's the OC5. Ah, that's a good option. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll, I'm going to try the octave OC5. Um, and then I think I just spotted another more budget one in here. So, yeah, the, the Nether Octaver. Never tried it. We'll see what never, it does. Never tried never it. Tried it. Um, never tried it. Never. Into the Nether. I can't say. That's Reggie's machine. We're off to Nether Netherland. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wrong band. Wrong uh, band, man. Yeah, so we'll, we'll try that and we'll try the boss one and see which one does the job the best. Um, yes. That aside, need some kind of overdrive, so... Heavy or mild? Mild, but with, wild. The op mild, with the option of being turned up. So, Wild Fro, I think I'm going to go with because I know it does both really well and hopefully that should do the job. So, last one, I may or may not need it, but I'm going to try and find a compressor just in case it needs something to kick it out a bit more. So, possibly the Boss Bass Compressor again. Yeah, I think I'll go with the VC1X and may or may not need it, but see where we end up. So, I think that's everything, is that it? isn't it? There is actually a, a Crybaby Mini in the, in the cabinet. I just didn't see it because it's that small. <laughs> Even my mini. glasses on, it's too small. Now, you're... you're, you're like a giant in comparison to the, the Crybaby <laughs> Mini. But yeah, there is a Crybaby Mini there. So are we sorted? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So hang on, I need to recap. So I've got a really ridiculous expensive guitar with kill switching capabilities, which is going to make me look like an idiot because I can't play kill switch. Um, <clears throat> Telecaster. Yeah, I think that's it. Crikey. Wow. To the video room. Yep. Jump. Welcome back to Anderson's TV!
We are back in the video room. Rage Against the Machine, we're utterly deaf. What? What? Who? Hey? Judith! Ah. Susan! Huh? Four o'clock. Yes, I would like some cheese. Mozzarella. To Tom Mozzarella. Tom Mozzarella. Tomato Mozzarella. <laughs> Tomato mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hello, hello, hello. Yes, so uh, yeah, so we're going to start with guitar gear. So uh, I went for the Pacifica uh, after all. Don't know why I said it like that. You know, just the mood took me in that direction. It's, it's the end of the day, and Pacificas are the way to go. So I went to Pacifica. Uh, I really like these guitars. Uh, it had the right single coil sound. Um, it's Tom's sound isn't really it's not humbucker it is a single coil although his guitar his arm um, home scale looks like he's got humbuckers it's actually um single coils in disguise as he would say it's like the old k guitars from the 60s where they looks like they got humbuckers but they don't or 70s anyway um so i went for Pacifica. this guitar is really cool the only problem i did have with it is because it's got really really light strings on it when i went to drop d um when we did born of a broken man uh, the, low, the low D string was like, boom, <laughs> bending out of tune. <laughs> so it was just kind of like trying, I was like barely touching the guitar and the string was just like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> Turned to hell at the skeleton by the Beatles. <laughs> anyway, that's the guitar. It's really, really cool. Amazing. Love Pacificas. Really, really cool. Budget friendly, happy guitars. So Amp was the line since Catalyst. This is the first time playing through a Catalyst. I'm in love. I want one and I'm going to get one. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I'm basically just using like the high gain channel of this and just cranked it. Uh, I've got no bass, middle or treble on it. It's just presence at uh, one o'clock, uh, that's it. And I've got the gain all the way up, channel volume all the way up and the master is at nine o'clock. Reverb is at nine o'clock, tiny little bit of reverb. Uh, and that's that. Pedal wise, got the phase 95 for basically the special effect, which I'll demonstrate. It's basically for um, the intro to, uh, what's it, Killing, Killing in the name, name, where basically Tom turns it on and just goes. <laughs> and it was so happen. tempting. I know, I, I saw you going for the volume <laughs> control. I was like, do it, do it. <laughs> anyway, um, so basically that's what the phase night is there for, is that thing. Um, is that on? Yeah, there we go, it's off. Uh, profit delay, uh, I've got this set up for that kind of like weird helicopter noise, which is kind of more audio slave. Which you can kind of like augment with the wah. Uh, oh, by the way, as well, also to note, all these pedals are going through the effects loop of the amp. The only th I'm going straight into the front end with the guitar, as you can see by the white lead. Uh, all these pedals are going through the effects loop uh, because that's the way Tom runs it. They're very, very clean. So coming back to the profit, if I kick on the wah, I can then kind of like augment the delay, it's really weird. So that's really cool. And you can get different kind of sounds with that as well. Um, if I turn everything up to about, you know, if I put everything about 11, kind of weird things, a bit more time. Sounds cool. Uh, pitchfork I'm using as my whammy. Combine that with delay, fun things happen. I mean, what's not to love about that? I feel like that? I'm in a 50s sci-fi Yeah. Show. I turned the delay off, so that ruined that one, didn't it? <laughs> uh, and then the crybaby's through the effects loop as well, and this is really important to get that Tom Morello wah sound. You can't get his wah sound by running it into the front end. Uh, so that bulls on parade thing, it's the it, running through the effects loop gives you a <laughs> Oh yeah, drop D. <laughs> So, works. It, it just, it's wicked, really good fun. And then also, when it's on, I can't, I don't have a, oh, I do have a kill switch over there, which I'm going to try in a minute and make a fool of myself with. <laughs> but when it's on, flat out, you hear that white noise, it makes it better for the scratchy thing that Tom Rowe does, which I'm going to attempt to do in a minute and totally look like a total tool doing. But the amp sound itself uh, is just... 
gorgeous sound. <laughs> to you Tim. Sounds great. Or oh, Kim. Kim. <laughs> one of them. Yeah that one. <laughs> so bass wise I ended up not going for the Stingray but going for the Squire Jazz because it kind of just kicked out a bit more, it gave it more definition and it does the kind of finger noise kind of thing like when you hit the strings you can really hear it so if I don't do this in drop D. Obviously minus effects, but you can hear you've got that kind of finger noise. It just did that a little bit better than the Stingray, so that's why I went for this. Uh, I'll say a little bit more on this because there is another option, but we'll go through the pedals first. So uh, I went for the kind of general overdriven sound, but not really distorted. I went for the Green Tube Overdrive by Tone City, just to kind of give that his general tone because he rarely plays clean. So that's doing the bulk of the work tone wise and then for when he plays really distorted I've got that on along with the wild fro and then pretty much always on was the boss octave OC5 which I went for over the nether because it just kind of it sounded more Tim Comforty to my ears so I went for that. Never uh, more. Say no more. Never more. <laughs> uh, so I went for the orange Crush 50 over the Ampeg because it did exactly what I thought it would, which is kick out a lot of power. And Tim is all about power, so I didn't even need a compressor. Yeah, it's you could a... almost say he's trying to take the power back. Ah. No! <laughs> um, At yeah, least it's so... not soul power. No. Stop it! No. <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty much the whole bass rig. Uh, as for amp settings, what do we have? So, I'm so short, I can't see the white dot. <laughs> where, it's just, where are they? Okay, treble is about three o'clock. Uh, mids are 12 o'clock. Um, and bass is about three o'clock. And that's pretty much it. Cool. Nick, get some stilts. I know, or, I or know. steps. That was a real struggle then. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, awesome. Yeah. So, prices. Uh, do you yes. want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Ladies I'll first. explain yes, ladies the, first. the base mystery. So, mm -hmm. um, this is the Squire, Fender Squire 40th Anniversary Jazz. And I really wanted to go for this because, again, the jazz sounded more like Tim Comerford. But they didn't have any Squire affinities in of the normal price. So, this one is 429 and it's a really awesome bass and it looks really cool so I'm happy to be able to show it but if you didn't want to splurge out the 429 on this bass the Squire Affinities are 219 so you've kind of got either option it was just this was what we had in the shop nice. so pedal wise um, well amp wise the orange was 229 uh, the green tube was 40 uh, no it's 29 pounds should be 60 but it's on sale right now um, if you're quick enough to get to there but yeah. by the time this video goes out, this offer might be over, but you never know. But it might not be. <gasps> <laughs> uh, World Pro, which is 45. Uh, the Boss Octave, which is 119. So all in all, it comes to uh, 851, but you could knock another kind of 200 quid off if you didn't go for the more expensive bass. So that's cool. pretty much it. Awesome. I've just realised as well, for Drop D songs, Tom Rose is a Telecaster, so it'd be a lot more stable than something like this with a float. well, not, it's not a floating bridge, but with a trem, so yeah, for all the Drop Z stuff, it's a Telecaster, but either way, you know, it did the job, kind of. Um, so me, uh, Mr. Pacifica, this is 169. 
what, what more do we want? I mean, seriously. 169 for Pacifica. The uh, Catalyst was 149. Um, the Mini Phase, the Phase 95 here, that was 95. MXR's uh, pricing there on, on, on the nose. <laughs> um, the Profit, which is becoming one of my favourite delay pedals, uh, is £40. The Pitchfork is 149 That's wicked. I love the fact that kind of takes the place of a whammy. And you're going to pay less for that than you will like a Digitech whammy because mm. they're ridiculous. Uh, and it does the thing. You can have it on that no latch mode where you just press the switch. And it does go whoop. It does kind of simulate the, the ramp up, which is super cool. Uh, and then I've got this crybaby. It's the uh, pedal board friendly one, and that is one two five. So all in all, my entire setup came to eight two seven, eight hundred and twenty seven pounds. All this is there. And the thing is, as well, with these setups that we get, you don't have to buy all these on the day. You know, you could come and like get like say the amp one day or the guitar one day, and then get mm. a pedal and just kind of build it up. You don't have to just come in and like you know. Yeah, it can just blow be a work in progress. All your money on. Yeah, work yeah. in progress exactly. But it, yeah, it should hopefully give you an idea of where we are. And again, mega important Tom Morello effects in the effects loop, uh, never in the front end. They just don't work. They don't sound right. They just don't sound right. So yeah, cool. I'm gonna have a go at scratching on the guitar. <laughs> go on. Because it's gonna be hysterically bad. Can I can I get to it? Yeah, I'm really happy with this. It it, it all works. And it, it sounds great, the Catalyst sounds great. Pitchfork does what I want to do, the Profit does what I want to do, the Phase 95 does, the Crybaby does. Happy yep. days. These all do what I want them yeah. to do, so. I've got to say, that's a really nice kill switch. So, to get the scratchy thing, you've got to engage the wire and keep it toe down. And then, uh, this is going to be hysterical, because I don't know how to <laughs> do it. Kind of. It's like he's in the room. I know, it's, it's literally, you wouldn't know, would you? Can I have another <laughs> go? Can I try again? Am I allowed? Go on. I'm going to turn away from the amps, I'm just feeding back. <laughs> That's great fun, even though I can't do it very well, it's great fun. <laughs> I need it. It is like literally very in the room. All right, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll hopefully see you again very soon for more sounds like, sound like, sounds sound like, sounds like, like. <laughs> sound like on Anderton's TV. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Thank you. Goodbye.